what do you think of when you think of pollution? For a lot of people, it's an image like this. Uh, last year, the Environmental Protection Agency reported that we spew in this country over 900 million pounds of toxic chemicals legally into the air, over 400 different chemicals and chemical families. If it's water pollution, maybe you think of something like this. The Environmental Working Group developed the online national tap water database, most recently published in collaboration just last year with the New York Times. We have found in our studies over 1,000 contaminants in finished drinking water, including hundreds of chemicals, and believe it or not, a lot of what you drink looks like this before it's treated, but it still has contaminants. Plastic, in my mind, I have an image of a pristine production facility, maybe. And then this, trash. Endless, endless trash following our land fouling our water. Today I want you to begin thinking about plastic pollution in some new ways, not just trash. It's one of our best selling points in fighting plastic pollution is trash, but there's another way to think about it. Scientists have been studying pollution in air and water and land for decades, but recently they've begun to study the pollution in people. And plastic trash is very directly relevant here because it's in us too. At the Environmental Working Group, we have pioneered work to biomonitor people. We call it mapping the human toxome, analogous to mapping the human genome, the idea being that we want to see what the toxic chemical makeup is in our bodies. And it's especially important to do that because we've learned through genetic studies that genes are turned off and turned on, sometimes with profound harmful biological effects by the contact they have with chemicals. We've studied 200 people. We found almost 500 toxic chemicals in that small group. But there's a group of 20 that has had a profound effect around the world on the debate over toxic chemicals. They were exposed, and we found in them 38 different plastic chemicals, chemicals that are added to plastic to make it clear to make it hard, to make it soft, to make it opaque, to stop it from bursting into flames, and to also make sure that it doesn't get a sunburn. We add chemicals to plastics for all those purposes. This group of people was not exposed by virtue of the air that they breathed, or the water that they drank, or any food that they ate. They weren't exposed by any consumer product that they purchased. About the only thing we do know about this group of people is that when the exposures took place, all of them looked like this. This was the first time since the beginning of the chemical revolution a century ago that anyone had ever bothered to look and see if the chemicals in the environment absorbed by the mother were passed through to the child. And the bottom line is, of course, profoundly disturbing. Chemical pollution, Plastic chemical pollution begins in the womb. We found hundreds of chemicals in these newborns, and we found dozens of chemicals used in plastics. Now, we found them at low levels, part per billion. And my friends in industry often use this talking point to suggest that a part per billion or 20 or 30 parts per billion really doesn't matter. How could it have a harmful biological effect? A part per billion is one pancake in a stack of pancakes 4,000 miles high, they say. What could possibly have an effect at that level? Well, let me say three things in response to that. First, week after week, studies come out documenting part per billion, very low level, harmful impacts in human and animal studies from the chemicals we're talking about. Two, we only study chemicals if we study them at all, alone, one by one. We never study them in combination. All of you in this room have dozens, if not hundreds, of carcinogens, neurotoxins, and other toxic agents in your blood right now. No question about it. But the third reason is, when we have studied a special group of chemicals, we've come to find out that low doses really do matter. We call these chemicals drugs. For example, this drug, Cialis, used to treat erectile dysfunction. How many gentlemen here use Cialis? <laughs> Uh, it's a sharp group. No hands went up, although around the world we may have many hands going up. 
One dose of Cialis, the therapeutic dose, is 30 parts per billion of the active ingredient in your blood. But not only can it have profound therapeutic benefits, some people are more sensitive than others, and we call those in the world of drugs side effects, right? Here's one of them. At 30 parts per billion, if you have any sudden decrease in hearing or vision, stop taking Cialis and seek immediate medical help. Can't see or hear. <laughs> and then there's the most famous side effect of all. At 30 parts per billion, if you experience an erection lasting more than four hours, call your doctor right away. My question about this side effect is very simple. If you have also experienced the preceding one and can't see or hear, how do you make the call? <laughs> low doses matter. And we're exposed to low doses of toxic chemicals every day from myriad products. Some examples. The US government approves over 1,000 additives in food packaging because they migrate out of the packaging and into the food. Most of them are plastic chemicals. Disposable plastic water bottles. Over 90 chemicals can be added to these bottles, according to the US government. That's one of the uses for sunblock. Yes, we put sunblock in plastic disposable water bottles. BPA, bisphenol A. It's a very toxic compound. The Centers for Disease Control, our federal health agency, has found it in over 90% of the American public. It is neurotoxic. It causes problems with sexual development. It can interfere with chemotherapy when it's used in medical devices, which is tragically ironic since it also has been linked to cancer. And we found BPA in 9 out of 10 minority newborns that we tested in 2008. It was in their umbilical cord blood. So what do we do? Well, first of all, we focus on the fact that we're concerned about toxic chemicals because there are changes in health status in this population and around the world that we cannot explain by genetics alone. We don't evolve so quickly that we would see a 57% increase in childhood brain cancer in the last quarter of this century. And let me tell you, ask any pediatrician who was practicing in the early 1970s, and they will tell you, if a kid had brain cancer, they knew it. This is not a diagnostic improvement in our understanding, it's real. Birth defects, another thing that chemicals are implicated in. Hypospadias is a deformation of the penis, where the tip of the urethra comes out not at the end of the penis, but somewhere along the shaft, requiring surgery in infancy. It is now affecting one out of 125 baby boys in this country. Neurological problems, ADHD, learning disabilities, and of course the great mystery, the great tragedy, autism. The latest numbers from our federal government in the United States, one out of 111 children is born, becomes by the age of two or three, somewhere on the autism spectrum. It's one in 70 boys. There's no question that this is an interaction between what we bring to the party genetically, including special susceptibilities that these children may have, and something we're exposed to in the environment. So what do we do about it? We can't avoid chemical exposures, toxic exposures. <laughs> we're not proposing that we ban all plastics, but we are proposing we get smarter about plastic pollution and policy. We need to do some basic things. We need to make sure that we require plastic chemicals are safe for children and others who are sensitive before it comes on the market. And some people are more sensitive to low doses. Remember Cialis. We need to disclose health and safety studies, disclose exposure routes, because when that happens, consumers respond and they demand that BPA be removed from sippy cups and bottles and food cans, and that is starting to happen. We've done this before. We took the lead out of gasoline and lead levels in human blood in this country plummeted. We took PCBs, very toxic chemical used throughout our electricity grid, off the market when it began showing up in wildlife and then in people. 
They said we might not be able to have electricity if we did that. Well, the lights are still on, and our blood lead levels of PCBs are plummeting. Ah, one last image. Earlier this year, the president's cancer panel, drawing on environmental working group research, pointed out that babies come into the world pre-polluted with hundreds and hundreds of toxic chemicals. And the contribution those chemicals make to cancer is almost certainly understated. That's certainly the case. This baby is near full term. He's receiving the equivalent of 300 quarts of blood a day from his mother. That carries the, nu the nutrients he needs to grow so explosively, the oxygen he needs to breathe, and it carries any toxic chemicals, hundreds and hundreds of toxic chemicals and plastic chemicals that the mother has been exposed to. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Chemicals like this can destroy, literally, a baby's mind, his ability to think. This baby is my baby. See him smiling? He turned out just fine. But babies like him are born every day. Their minds are at risk, just like the ocean is at risk. A threat to our seas, a threat to the infinite ocean of his dreams. <laughs>